kink, BDSM. I think it's some of the most confusing, <laughs> you know, words. And we, you know, we have a strong reaction to them and we really don't mm -hmm. understand what kink and BDSM is about. So Laura, I know that you've been very involved in the kink community um, in your area. And I thought speaking from your experience, you can break that down for us in a way that we can understand. I'd be happy to. I could make a whole course <laughs> just on, on kink and BDSM, but I'm just going to try and like, you know, summarize in generalities um, what this is. So kink is sexual behavior outside of what it's considered typical. So what's typical? You know, typical is something that someone else is doing that I'm not doing, right? You know, I, I think in a sense, we're all kinky if we've been to a body sex circle. I mean, isn't masturbating together in a circle with other women outside of the norm? I, I think, think so. so. I think it's very kinky. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yes, yes. And it's fun, too. You know, to me, kink is like sexual play. You're experimenting. You know, it's just not, it's anything outside the norm of like missionary position. I remember I was in a relationship Saturday night in the dark missionary. That is what we would call very vanilla, which is the opposite of chocolate, which would be considered kinky. So um, now what's BDSM? And sometimes that, you know, our our basic knowledge of that might be through Fifty Shades of Grey. I got it wrong. I thought it was bond, uh, um, bondage, dominance, sadomasochism, and I left off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do <you> yes. Know? <laughs> so yes. So BDSM is an acronym. The B stands for bondage. The D stands for discipline and dominance or dominance. The S stands for submission or sadism, which is that you like to give pain. And the M stands for masochism, which means you like to receive pain. Now, I think one of the big misconceptions about BDSM is that it's all about giving and receiving pain. I don't like pain. I don't like to give pain. I don't like to receive pain. <laughs> Now, you know, we, um, we like to say there's a phrase saying, don't yuck on my yum in the BDSM world, which is just kind of means like, you know, there's lots. There's not just 50 shades of gray. There's 50 shades of every color in the crayon box. And so we're all going to have different things that we like. And we all accept each other for what it is without judgment um, within the community. So it's not just giving and receiving pain. It can be very sensual. I'm probably more like, um, I like bondage. I like discipline. Um, spanking is is one of my favorite things. <laughs> I feel like everyone likes a good spanking. Right, I mean, I'm right? sorry. It's milking endorphins, and that's what we don't understand. We think it's pain like someone's pinching you and it hurts. Right. But if I can stimulate the body in a way that is intense, mm -hmm. I get a hit of endorphins. Yes. Yeah. So like a little bit of sensual pain is good. And there's a range of spanking too. Like I don't like the bruising kind, no, I don't no, like, no, no. you know, with implements and the whole, but a good barehanded spanking. Oh, nothing sexier, nothing better. <laughs> That's another thing for some people in the community, BDSM is not sexual at all. They're there kind of for the sensation of it, the, you know, the sensual sensation. For me, it's sexual. I mean, I get turned on in, in a BDSM scene, watching, participating. For me, it's closely linked to my so sexuality. So does that mean it's kink is your orientation? I consider my kinky side to be an orientation. I believe I was born with it. It's hardwired into me. And if you look back at my childhood, I remember my first, you know, you show me yours, I'll show you mine, like experiences mm -hmm. with a boy when I was about five. And it was in my home, in the bathroom, we had the door shut. And, you of know, course, we the we're all hot goes right. down in the bathroom. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so we did the whole pulling down of the pants thing. And I showed him my vulva and he showed me his penis. And then somehow I convinced him to spank me. And I stood in 
the bathtub with my hands up against the wall. And I remember this so clearly. It was all my idea. And I handed him the bathing brush and told him to spank me with the back of the handle. Now, how would I know this? I didn't see this anywhere. You know, I wasn't spanked as a child because I was such a good little girl. But maybe that's partly why I like to be the bad girl. You know, <laughs> the limit, the boundary, like, oh, I, I, the taboo, I'm naughty. Yes. Right. right. So there is something. Mm. And I mean, I remember feeling like a little tingle between my legs. This was a good thing. And then at the time I even switched, like I, he, then I had him stand up against the, <laughs> I spanked him. Oh, so, I, love it. I don't know where that came from, but, um, and then even later on, um, my next door neighbor, I was probably about 10 or 11 and he would have been a couple years older than me when his parents were gone. And I don't remember his sister being around either. He liked to tie me to the tree and he had oh. these ropes. Oh, he- it's so much fun because <laughs> the bark is a little rough. Right, right. And the rope was like, and he tied me to the tree. And then I don't know, he went, he disappeared. So, I mean, I imagine he was behind like something, another tree or another building. Like, And he might have been me. stimulating himself while she's watching you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I thought it was very, like, there was something very erotic about it. And eventually, like, I'd untie myself and get away. Um, or he would come and untie me. But I mean, I remember doing that multiple times and I really didn't understand that it was like sexual, but you know, it's definitely, I feel when it comes out that early and in that kind of way, like I didn't have to go back. I never said no, you know, it's like, yes, please tie me up again. (laughs) Well, I love rope bondage and I think you know, we should experience these things. Sometimes if we don't feel sexual arousal in our day-to-day lives, mm-hmm. um, when I'm working with clients and they describe their, you know, what their sexuality is like, and they go, I just, mm-hmm. it might be time for you to explore. Right. Because BDSM kink can also be an experience. So Carlin, how do you think that is for you? Oh, I, I, yeah. For me, it's not an orientation, Mm -hmm. um, but I love dabbling. So Mm -hmm. for me, it was when I flew into Berlin on the red eye, I was going to um, a sex film festival. Uh, There was a woman, a dominatrix, and she was doing suspensions when they tie you up with ropes and then suspend you. So they have these little poles and you're kind of hanging. And it was wonderful because she, (laughs) she was perfect. And I like the surrender. Mm Mm-hmm. And what I like is the communication because as they're putting the ropes around you, they're saying, how does that feel? It's not that they're just doing anything to you. You're also, you're negotiating, right? right? There's a back and forth. And I love when we can express ourselves, Mm -hmm. right? And talk about things as they're happening before, (laughs) during, and after. And then there's a moment where I had, I had to let go and she suspended me and it was an out of body and that can happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My, I had a migraine before I went into the ropes. It was gone. And what I didn't realize is there were like 30 people watching. Yeah. And I thought mm-hmm. it was just the two of us. Mm-hmm. And that's something that also, that's that kind of oxytocin hit. Right. You know, where you're at. So was it sexual? It was a sexual experience for me. Mm-hmm. I've never done it again, but I didn't have the opportunity, mm-hmm. but I guess I don't seek it out with the same fervor that I will seek out an erotic recess. Right, right, right. And see, for me, I will, um, because it's that's that's part of how I'm wired. So probably it sounds like what you experienced is subspace. Like when you get into that dream, like, you know, that's, that's when you've gone over the edge and you just, and again, right, all of those hormones, oxytocin, dopamine, everything and you just feel very floaty and and that that is one of the hallmarks too of a bdsm scene um when two partners are playing with each other so a scene in bdsm is simply an activity and all activities are planned ahead through negotiations and there's they're always consensual So there's an agreement about what will take place. Um, And I think that that's something that we should 
that should spread to all sexual activity, right? I mean, shouldn't we have an agreement, um, you know, before we go into any kind of sexual activity and, and talk about your preferences, right? That's what a negotiation is all about. This is what I would like from the scene. You know, this is what I don't want to have happen. And you agree to it. Um, there uh, is always a safe word, right? Mm -hmm. So if the scene is going, consent can always be withdrawn at any time, even if you agreed, like, you know, yes, you can, you know, you can hit me with that rhythm stick or, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> that Wouldn't that fun. be wonderful if yeah, we had right? this in our heteronormative relationships and mm -hmm. partner sex? Mm -hmm. I yeah. can withdraw consent whenever I want with a safe word. Exactly. And How so humane. <laughs> I know, right? So red is considered like the universal safe word. You know, and if if a top is checking in with you, you know, green means everything is okay. Red means like let's slow down or, you know, something, let's talk about this. And then red is the safe word. And this is why if you're gonna dabble in BDSM, playing in a dungeon is the safest place to be because everyone is watching out for you. And I have seen it. If, if a bottom in a scene calls red, everything around them stops and all of the other tops are like ready to jump in to help. Um, so I mentioned it a couple of times. A top is basically the person giving the action and a bottom is the person receiving it. It could be there's, you know, a power exchange with dominance and submission. But, you know, if, if you just remember like top and bottom and there can be more than one, you can have multiple tops and multiple bottoms. And you can um, be a switch. I remember and, when Betty went to her first kink party and they said, are you a top, a bottom or a switch? And she was like, I, I don't know. Yes. So switch, you're, sometimes you're the top and then sometimes you're the bottom. Yes. Yeah. I identify as a bottom leaning switch. Um, you know, so that's the other part about it. There's like so there's so much to explore. And just like everything else with sexuality, you start to discover your own identity within kink. So, Carolyn, I love the story that you told me about um, Betty and the scene that she had. I think that's a great example. Yes. So Betty really learned about the inherent power dynamic. And anytime you're sharing sexual expression with another person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I learned about it in the kink community. And so mm -hmm. in the eighties on the, you know, kind of wave of HIV and, you know, the orgy scene had dried up and, um, Betty was in a celibate period, but she joined the lesbian sex mafia LSM. Mm -hmm. And it was a group where they did these elaborate role-playing scenes. So it was all women mm -hmm. and they would pick someone's apartment and they would do these whole roles. So, in this one scene, it was a hostage scene, and Betty mm -hmm. was the hostage. So she, they had the captors, right? Mm -hmm. So the yeah. captors came, and Betty said that they all got so into it that mm -hmm. it was like it was really happening. Yeah. And so she's like, they were tying them up, and they had all of the hostages in one corner of her apartment, and then all of a sudden, one of the captors was like, take her denture, yeah. and they did. And they took her denture out of her mouth, and Betty said she thought, how am I going to get that denture back? And yeah. She's like, I really went into that whole like completely submissive hostage role. And I think in a way, if you think about it, we all want to shift our roles in life. Yes. And when we're in one role, we're processing stress and trauma the same way. Mm -hmm. And then when we can switch it up, it can be very healing, right? Yeah. Because there's Betty Dodson. Mm -hmm. right? This The icon. And now she's tied up and someone pulled her denture out, you know? <laughs> It's one of those mm -hmm. humanizing moments mm -hmm. that keeps us grounded. Yes. And keeps us connected to who we are. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I think of kink and BDSM as, as sexual play, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's a way to change roles. And I love role play, by the way. That's like one of my main kinks, too. <laughs> <laughs> because it is, it's so much fun to step outside yourself and be in another role. Um, you know, all of it is safe, consensual. Um, if there's any risk involved, uh, you're aware of the risk going into it before you give your consent. And it's always your consent is always revocable. So, you know, it's not abuse. You know, it's not a mental illness. Um, it's, it's a way of having 
fun sexually.